Hi, it's The Wire. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. I'm nursing a bit of a cold. I hope you bear with me. For premium content, The Wire 70905.substack.com. Let's get right into it. I'm going to skip the prologue here. There's an excellent article this morning on BoxingScene.com where someone who knows boxing, someone who knows psychology, gives his breakdown on the Joshua Usyk fight. And that person is heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. Now he sees what I see. If Joshua does not catch, and Joshua's a blessed puncher, if Joshua does not catch Alexander Usyk early, right, he doesn't have to knock him out. He just has to severely hurt him. In other words, if Joshua doesn't land home run shots that diminish Usyk early, then there's a fair possibility here that Usyk gets a stoppage later in the fight. Let's go one step further, and timing is everything. If Usyk, who is a slow starter, starts fast, if you notice the two fighters on Joshua's side of the ring, I know Josh was the bigger man, but understand, there isn't a Mike Tyson in him. There isn't a Joe Lewis in him. In other words, the big man, George Foreman. There are big men in boxing who try to find you from the opening bell. Sonny Liston. Right? They're risk takers. They believe in themselves. They don't think that you can handle their power. They try to impose themselves on you. In my opinion, and I could be wrong, let's be blunt here. I'm dealing in the world of probabilities. I could be wrong. But in my opinion, that's not Anthony Joshua. So where a Sonny Liston is fighting a smaller Floyd Patterson, who was the heavyweight champion, and Liston decided, I'm going to get up in this guy's face in the first round. I'm going to throw big punches in the first round. I'm going to make this a firefight in the first round. By the way, two fights, Patterson never made it to the second round. Whereas I know that existed in Sonny Liston. I view Joshua psychologically as a different individual. I think Joshua is a guy who's a blessed puncher who, even though the world sees him as Goliath, understands he needs to be cautious. Because in my opinion, it takes Joshua a while to get the rhythm of the fight. So I'm not expecting Liston Patterson. I'm not expecting Joe Lewis, Max Schmeling, the rematch where Lewis told people he was going to take out Smelling in the first round and then went out there and went after it. Well, just to understand, if you're a cautious giant, if you're someone who needs to see the lay of the land, that works into Usyk's game plan. Because Usyk's a guy who is going to throw you off rhythm. He's a southpaw. It's going to take, and I don't care who Joshua's sparring partners were, it's going to take Joshua some time, 
to figure out Usyk's southpaw stance and rhythm. As this fight lingers, Usyk's going to have a learning curve. In other words, Joshua, because of location, because of size, because of our belief going into the fight, that it's more likely that Joshua is the bigger puncher, can inflict more damage early. That's reflected in the betting line, which is a joke. Right? Usyk at a plus 205 is one of the best bargains on any sporting event this weekend. Right? Because of our expectations, we're going to look at Joshua in the early rounds, and if Joshua comes across the ring and starts throwing big punches and starts getting reckless, does a Mike Tyson against Marvis Fraser, another first round demolition. We're going to notice it. But you and I know there are other dynamics happening here. Usyk's far more agile. Usyk is above average defensively. Revisit Derek Chisora Usyk. Chisora is as aggressive as he could be against Usyk, who we view as new to the division. Usyk did not get knocked down. Usyk takes over that fight in the middle rounds. So I need for people to understand the psychology here. Joshua's the bigger man, but he doesn't think like Sonny Liston. This isn't the bigger man who has no doubt that he can physically impose himself on his opponent. So what's going to happen is going to startle some people in my eyes. The lead in the fight is going to be the smaller man. Now if you see this developed by the third or fourth round, you'll know that Joshua's title is in major jeopardy. In other words, if you see the person who is initiating the combat to be Usyk. If you see Usyk on his front foot as he was against Gassiev, and if you see Joshua trying to counter punch, you'll know Joshua's in trouble. In other words, if it's a fight and Joshua comes across the ring and Usyk has nowhere to go and big punches are thrown. All right. All right. If it's Foreman, Kenny Norton, and I hope you look up these fights, Joshua will have the advantage. If Joshua's on his side of the ring and he's forced to be on his back foot, where he's not the fighter that he is on his front foot. And if Usyk is defensively better than Joshua's esteemed opponents, right? Dylan White, Kubrat Pulev, Andy Ruiz. Folks, I've just named four of Joshua's fights. In fact, let's talk about Joshua's opponents. Now, I Joshua's fighting who he has to. Joshua's had some big fights. Given the fact that not many of Joshua's world-class opponents have been viewed as highly credible, right? We have doubts about Charles Martin today. Joshua gets his title against Charles Martin. There's no outcry that I know of from the fans to have Charles Martin fight Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, or Anthony Joshua again. Right? Just understand, the Joseph Parker fight. I believe in Joseph Parker. But Joseph Parker defensively isn't Usyk. 
You haven't seen the Usyk fight where he's on the canvas early like Parker was against Derek Chisora. Right? That fight doesn't exist. We haven't seen the Usyk fight where he's hitting the canvas like Parker was against Dylan White. Right? You're dealing with a level of defense here that Joshua has not seen. So if a boxing match breaks out and not a fight, I'm just warning people, it's going to be one-sided. So, Tyson Fury, who has wanted to fight Joshua for years, just like Usyk has, because I believe those in the game see the holes. Tyson Fury feels that if Joshua does not get an early stoppage, he himself might get stopped. Just understand, if this fight makes it to the end of the fourth round, and you look at Usyk, and he hasn't been significantly hurt. There hasn't been a moment where he's desperately trying to hold on to Anthony Joshua. Right? There isn't a moment where he winces after getting hit with a body shot, and you, the fan, see his legs buckle. No, no. If we reach the end of the fourth round, and you see Usyk with still a spring in his step. And you see him in his corner, bouncing on his toes. If I can find a live line, just understand that I already have money on Usyk. And I will be upping, upping that stake if we make it to the end of the fourth round and Usyk is still alert and active. Right? Understand, too, certain fighters didn't care about stamina, and it cost them. Right? Foreman destroys Kenny Norton. It obviously was not in Foreman's mind when he fights Ali, I believe it's the very next fight, in the Rumble in the Jungle. And at that point, Foreman's on the verge of taking over the world, folks, because he had destroyed Joe Fraser. I believe that Joe Fraser fights two rounds. Then he destroys Kenny Norton, right? But understand, the foreman mindset, very different than Anthony Joshua. So then he fights Ali, Rumble in the Jungle. If he beats Ali, folks, the early 1970s are the George Foreman era, right? Foreman obviously comes out, is so aggressive that when Ali is on the ropes, Foreman is still throwing power shots. Never cross Foreman's mind that the person who would be punching out George Foreman that night was himself. No gas left in the seventh round. Now that's Foreman's personality at the time. By the way, another great Foreman fight, the Ron Lyle fight. Right? You saw the second round of that fight and you understood this fight is not going the distance, right? Neither guy had any fantasy that that fight would go the distance. Now, that's the gunslinger as heavyweight champion. You and I know, and this matters to betters, Anthony Joshua, even with some early KOs, is not a gunslinger. While Foreman was thinking KO. And it cost him against Ali. Anthony Joshua is cautious by nature. Right? Beautiful knockdown. It's beautiful. It's everything you need to know about what Anthony Joshua does best of Andy Ruiz. But even in that fight, folks, that's the third round. Against an opponent, faster hands than Usyk, but against an opponent who didn't have the foot speed, right? That's the knock on Andy Ruiz. Understand, against an immobile opponent, cautious Anthony Joshua 
takes three rounds to find Andy Ruiz. You throw a southpaw stance into the mix with movement against the cautious guy who doesn't have the rhythm of the fight. And I believe Joshua's window of opportunity, the first four rounds, is going to evaporate. Right? You get to the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds against the guy who, <coughs> when he wants to be, is a combination puncher. Right? Against the guy who lost the early rounds. Against Tony Bellew. Then stepped on the gas and dominated Bellew in the middle of the fight. You get to the middle of the fight. If Joshua hasn't hurt Usyk by then, and I mean badly, in my opinion, this fight is over. Let me close by saying this. I understand many people believe that I'm anti this fighter, I'm anti that fighter, and stuff like that. You know, I live in a different world. It's a probabilistic world. Right? It's one where you see an investment, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you think to yourself, what are the risks on both sides here? Right? I can tell you, I think the world of Canelo. People here online know I made videos years ago praising Canelo when he was unknown. The plus 550 that you're getting right now on Caleb Plant is an absolute steal. Right? People need to think of things in terms of odds. Now, Tyson Fury, a man who knows boxing a hell of a lot better than I do, in the interview on BoxingScene.com has said he views this as a 50-50 fight. Now let's let's just analyze that statement for a brief second. Fury's telling you it's 50-50. Right? That right there tells you you're getting incredible value on Usyk at plus 205. In other words, the casino is telling you Usyk loses more than two out of every three matches against Anthony Joshua. If you think it's a 50-50 fight, regardless of who you think is going to win the fight, you understand that just value betting, you're getting the most bang out of your buck or your British pound if your money's on Usyk. Right? Because they're giving you far greater than even money odds. Now let's analyze what Fury said a little bit further. Fury, in the article on BoxingScene.com, I'm trying to pub Boxing Press here. That's a great site. Right? On BoxingScene.com, Fury says, If Joshua doesn't win by stoppage early, he's in trouble. So what I want you to do is to think about that for a moment. So it's 50-50 at the start of round one, according to Tyson Fury. Let's say we get to the end of round four. And Alexander Usyk is still Alexander Usyk. He's bouncing. He's not hurt. He hasn't gone through a round like the third round that Kubrat Pulev went through. He hasn't been hit. He's still active. He's like Povetkin was after the beginning of the fight. Povetkin gets caught in the middle of the fight, but Povetkin's 100% after the first three rounds. If Tyson Fury has it 50-50 at the beginning of the fight and believes Joshua needs to get a stoppage early, what do you think his odds would be at the end of the fourth round, one-third into the fight, if Usyk's 100%. Don't you think his odds at that point would be at least 60-40 in favor of Usyk taking the title? Folks, I'm just telling you, in my opinion, the odds at that point are more like 70-30.
right? Usyk's gone 12 hard rounds with people like Maris Bredis, right? Gassiev, right? Usyk has done so on foreign soil. Usyk is the person with more experience in grueling fights than Anthony Joshua, right? If Joshua doesn't get the early KO, folks, even by Tyson Fury's math, Usyk at that point would have at least a 60% chance of winning, right? So look at the fight, understand there's going to be urgency from the opening bell. Because, quite frankly, and I don't care how thin Anthony Joshua comes in, <coughs> Joshua is going to have to channel Sonny Liston. Right? He's going to have to channel George Foreman, Mike Tyson. Right? How much of a chance did Marvis Fraser have in that fight of staying away from Mike Tyson? If you're on the Anthony Joshua side of the ledger because of his perceived power, because he's a heavyweight fighting a cruiserweight, because you feel he can take Usyk's punch, but Usyk can't take his, then you want to see him channeling Joe Lewis against Max Schmeling. Right? You want to see him over on the Usyk side of the ring, doling out punishment, right? As I've said, Sonny Liston fights the heavyweight champion, Floyd Patterson. Patterson never makes it out of the first round in either fight. If you don't see that, and suddenly we're in round three, good luck. Right? Understand, they're going to show you in a high-profile fight like this the punch stat numbers. There's going to be a line for power punches. You better see Joshua landing some power punches early. Because if he doesn't and a boxing match breaks out, I believe this is going to start to look like a Vanda Holifield against Mike Tyson the first fight. You're going to start to see Goliath with the guy up on his side of the ring battering him. Key on the left hand of Usyk. Right? Usyk throws a very straight, very short left hand that we don't talk about enough. It's the left hand that stopped Tony Bellew. Look at that film. Look how hurt Bellew is. Understand who Bellew is. Bellew's the ultimate warrior. You've seen Tony Bellew fights where he's openly trading with an opponent. You get the feeling that if Tony Bellew had a broken left arm in a fight, he'd still continue fighting. That's a Carmine Basilio type fighter. Usyk did not give him the opportunity. Understand how fearless Pellew is. He fought David Hay twice. Right, folks? He didn't have the opportunity to show bravery against Usyk. He was stopped. It's a straight left hand up top. If you get to the end of the fourth round and Usyk's not badly hurt, AJ's in trouble. At that point, figuratively speaking, in my eyes, the belt will have shifted over to Usyk. Right? Let's just put it this way, too. Joshua enters the ring with a two-round advantage. I don't care what anybody else says. I've watched enough boxing to know that the people who run the sport are going to look around the arena, it's going to be packed. Joshua's going to take five minutes to get in the ring. The place is going to be screaming. Right? They might uh, 
play Caroline in the background, the fans will be singing. The judges will understand, wow, Joshua is popular. I'm guessing Joshua will have a two-round lead. If you get to the end of the fourth round and that two-round lead is gone, Usyk, slow starter, has shown up for the biggest fight of his career and is up three rounds to one in the actual fighting. In my opinion, the heavyweight title for Joshua is gone. Right? Also, let's not kid ourselves. Usyk from the Ukraine. Vladimir Klitschko from the Ukraine. Right? I'm just telling you, guys talk. Uh, Usyk trained with Lomachenko's dad. Right? We don't recognize the Ukraine enough. It has a huge footprint in the sport of boxing. I am guessing Usyk is acutely aware of the opportunity that Vladimir Klitschko let pass when Klitschko, who had been out of the ring for more than a year, dropped Anthony Joshua. Joshua gets up. He's done. Klitschko does not step on the gas. Right? Everyone in Klitschko's corner, including his brother, Vitaly Klitschko, who was there in the corner, thought the fight was over. Because of that happening, and because Usyk is a student of boxing, right, from the same part of the world as Vladimir Klitschko, if Usyk drops Joshua right around the part of the fight where he dropped Tony Bellew, I don't see Joshua surviving. If Joshua gets up and turtles like he did against Vladimir Klitschko, I think the assumption from the Usyk people is that he has to end the fight. I think the idea of a late stoppage by Usyk is a realistic possibility. I think Usyk is the better fighter. I think Usyk wins the fight. I'll agree with those who say that he has to survive the first few rounds of the fight, right? You could be a better fighter than Mike Tyson. The problem is with prime Mike Tyson, you had to survive him being in your face early. That's the dynamic AJ is going to have to channel to keep his title. If he thinks he can outbox Usyk from round 7 to 12 to earn a decision, in my opinion, he's kidding himself. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I need to see Joshua look like George Foreman. We forget how fearsome Foreman was. Right? Let's remember how Foreman gets the title. Takes out Joe Fraser. Right? Stoppage. Right? Is hitting Fraser with murderous punches early. Isn't there hiding behind a jab, trying to look cute boxing? No, he's there. He's throwing big shots. We need to see that early from Anthony Joshua. Joshua shouldn't be thinking about his stamina in round 10 while the action's taking place in round 2. Because if you let this fight linger, he's going to get outboxed badly, if not stopped. That's how I see it. I hope the fight's a classic. Whatever happens, win, lose, or draw, I'll be here with a post-fight video. I thank you for stopping by and listening to this one. Let me hear your comments and your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.